The memory drum. No, not that kind of drum. The memory drum was created for memory experiments, similar to the ones that would be conducted today. However, back in the 19th century, they didn't have the apparatus to systematically present stimuli. The story starts with Erman Ebbinghaus, a man who conducted very important memory research published in 1885. He read a long list of nonsense syllables to himself until he learned them by memory. He used a metronome to keep his pace so that he'd be exposed to each word the same amount of time. However, this was not ideal. He could see words in his periphery. The method was not automated, and he was both subject and experimenter. This is where Georg Elias Müller and Friedrich Schumann come in. Müller was born in Germany, and, like many other psychologists, his father was a theologian. He attended Leipzig University, where he studied history and philosophy. He ultimately had to choose between history and philosophy, but chose philosophy in the end, which led to psychology. He studied with Gustav Theodor Fechner and Hermann Lotz, who eventually pushed him to do psychology. He mainly studied psychophysics, vision, and memory, which we will be talking about today. Schumann was the student of Mueller. He also worked with Stumpf, and was also involved later on in the Gestalt movement. They want to recreate Ebbinghaus's memory experiments, but want to run it on multiple subjects. That's why Mueller wanted to come up with a way to present stimuli automatically to his subjects. In 1887, they decided to create an apparatus that would present the stimuli automatically and for a fixed amount of time. They took a chymograph, a rotating metal drum that would revolve paper against the pen to record physiological responses and basically turned it on its side and put a screen up against it. This idea was probably heavily inspired and influenced by James McKean Cattell's presentation device at Johns Hopkins. He used the chymograph to present letters or numbers, However, the speed of rotation was continuously variable, and he did not use this apparatus for memory studies. Mueller and Schumann created the memory drum, and the Leipzig instrument maker named Edward Zimmermann then commercialized this device, calling it the Rotational Apparatus for Memory Studies. He presented it in his catalog in 1894 and again in 1903. Because the original chymograph did not rotate at a constant speed due to the spring motor, they had to attach a disc that would touch a friction wheel to make the speed constant. They also wanted to be able to adjust the speed of the memory drum, so they used wind vanes. You could put a paper with a list of words on the drum and have it revolve so only one word would be visible at a time through the screen. One of the major drawbacks of the initial design of the memory drum was its constant movement. It would never pause on one word, but rather just continuously scroll. In 1904, Otto Littmann, working with Ebbinghaus, redesigned the drum so that the stimulus would be held for a fixed amount of time before moving to the next by using a notched gear. This solved the problem. In 1938, Ralph Gerbrands at Harvard University improved the memory drum even more by replacing the spring motor with an electric motor and implementing movable pins to control the speed of the drum. The memory drum now had all the necessary features to conduct reliable memory experiments. The speed of the drum was constant, there were different speed settings, and it had an electric motor. This model of the memory drum was the one used most widely across America, and was distributed by the Ralph Gerbrands Company. This company was founded by Ralph Gerbrands, and it manufactured many different experimental psychology apparatuses at the University of Harvard. The company existed from 1930 until 1994. These memory drums were the primary apparatus for memory stimuli from the 1890s until around the 1970s when computers started becoming affordable. Now you can only find these memory drums in museums like the Harvard Museum. And thus concludes the lifespan of the memory drum.